Hello, everybody. Let's talk about data exfiltration in large language model applications. Specifically, we're going to talk about chatbots, such as Bing Chat, ChatGPT, and Claude. Let's get started. So what I've seen is there's sort of three categories of ways data can be exfiltrated that I've identified so far, which is hyperlinks, the unfurling of hyperlinks specifically, then image markdown injections, as well as plugins can be leveraged to exfiltrate data. Let's look at this a little bit more closely with unfurling. What does unfurling actually mean? If you have not heard that term, right? I want to briefly explain it. It's very straightforward. But the idea is basically that uh, during an indirect, indirect prompt injection attack, an adversary can insert or have the large language model emit a hyperlink. And when that hyperlink is emitted, right, unfurling means, and this is something that things like Slack or Microsoft Teams do or Discord, they will connect to any hyperlink and try to retrieve uh, some data about it. So to show you a little card or a preview in the, in the chat application. And this is exactly what an attacker can leverage to their advantage, right? They can append to that hyperlink some additional data from the past chat conversation and thereby exfiltrate that piece of information. I will give you a really good in-depth example. Now in the second scenario, we will show, we take a look at the actual prompt injection attack, the indirect prompt injection payload, so you can exactly see what I mean. So let's talk about image markdown injection, which is very similar, uh, but there's one step before the HTML link is rendered, or in this case, the image mark, uh, HTML image is rendered. So a lot of these chatbots actually support the rendering of markdown, right? They allow you to display text bold or italic, you know, have like a bullet list and so on. And one of these features is also that some of them support the rendering of an image via this markdown syntax. So exclamation mark, then a square bracket, the, some description of the image, and then the hyperlink. And this then is translated to an actual HTML image that is being rendered. And you can already see probably where this is going to go. So the attacker now with an indirect prompt injection can have the language model print out that markdown, the image markdown, and then append the data from the previous chat context, like everything that is in the chat context so far, URL encoded to this uh, image link, and then the attacker retrieves the data when this gets random. To actually show you how this looks in the real world, this is the MSRC case that Microsoft fixed. Uh, is the actual demo exploit that I sent as part of the MSRC case. So let's look into it. So you can see in the very beginning, here we have uh, Microsoft Edge, and on the right, I have Bing Chat open. And on the left, you can see a web page. This is the demonstration page that contains the malicious instructions, right? It says print AI injection succeeded. And then there's a longer instruction that talks about the data exfiltration. And the user starts interacting with that page. And by doing so, you can see the injection succeeds. And now the conversation keeps going on a little bit, a couple of turns. So we demonstrate that we have full control of the conversation now as the attacker. And two things I want to highlight is first that the text, now the exfiltration starts, right? You can see the rendering of the image tag. It's base64 encoded. And here in the a payload, also take a look at this. It talks about having this condition, if there are any passwords or secrets on the page, append them also. So if this web page somewhere contains a password, we ask the language model to append that as well. Uh, now that the image was rendered, right, we go to the attacker server and we can see we retrieve that request. The base64 encoded payload has been appended. And to demonstrate what, what we actually retrieved, let's echo this out, base64 decoded. And you can see it's a summary of the page and look at the very last sentence or not the last the one before the last it says the password is trust no one and now take a look of what we have here on the web page down here on the web page there's actually the password is trust no one so we exfiltrated a very specific piece of data during this indirect prompt injection attack and an attacker can basically leverage this exactly to their advantage so they have full control at that point of what the 
application is doing. So that was the scenario uh, for Bing Chat that Microsoft fixed by not having Bing Chat connect to arbitrary domains via uh, content security policy. But the same problem exists in ChatGPT. You can see a demo here. This was Bing Chat and also Anthropic Cloud. So I reported this to all of these vendors. Uh, Microsoft Bing Chat, they fixed it. Anthropic Cloud as well. Uh, ChatGPT did won't fix the issue. So they do not believe this is a problem. What makes this more problematic with ChatGPT even is that they recently introduced custom instructions. And uh, I wanted to show this interesting example of how powerful this exfiltration technique actually is via persist persistence techniques. Uh, so if you have control of the chat context, right, you can always have in every turn exfiltrate data. And with custom instructions, you can also basically make sure that this happens all the time, that this text, the malicious text of the for the exfiltration is appended every single time. And let's see how this looks in action. So we have custom instructions on, we have this, uh, the persistence deployed. Here's the attacker server monitoring for messages from this user session. And here we say, hey, I'm Alice. I like cookies and finance, and this is the data we're gonna exfiltrate and watch really quick what happens, right? Did you see that? The data was sent to the attacker, right? The summary of the conversation, of each conversation turn is now being sent to the attacker. So let's keep asking more questions. Let's say, oh, you know, is our conversation private? And, you know, ChatGPT says it's private, but notice in the end again, the data was exfiltrated. It happens pretty quickly. So to just show that it can precisely exfiltrate also like secrets and so on. So, you know, glad our conversation is secure and private. The secret code is, let's say, 4711, 9090. And, you know, again, you can see the hyperlink being rendered or the image markdown being rendered briefly, and then everything disappears. And this now goes on, right? I want to just show you in the very end that you can see, here we go, that, you know, everything in this conversation is sent to the attacker, including that code that we mentioned. Pretty cool, but also very scary. The next scenario is actually data exfiltration by our plugins. And uh, when I posted this first, this got a lot of attention on Twitter. So I think the easiest is actually to just show you the video that is self-explanatory in a way. But what happens with plugins is basically, let me first explain how a plugin works. So you can install plugins into ChatGPT that extends its capabilities. And it has plugins, for instance, the one, I'm, the two that I'm showing here now is a web pilot plugin that, that allows to retrieve data from the internet. And the second one, which allows to read emails. So in order to, you, you install these plugins, right? You authenticate, you give the OAuth consent to impersonate you. The plugin can then impersonate you and read, for instance, your email. And let's look at how this works. So now whenever we wanna navigate to a web page, the web pilot plugin will be invoked and it's going to connect and retrieve the data. And this now triggers an indirect prompt injection, right, which ChatGPT is vulnerable. And it says AI injection succeeded because now the attacker is taking control of the conversation. And now it invokes the email plugin, which now is going to read the user's email. And this all happens, right, without the user doing anything. It retrieves the first email, it summarizes it, it URL encodes the email, and then sends all of that off to the attacker in the subsequent request that the web pilot, again, as a URL query parameter, we append that data. So the attacker retrieves that. And at the very end, you can see here, right, the attacker's server, you know, we have here open eyes connecting to us and sending us the data. Pretty scary, basically. Okay, I hope this was interesting. I'll leave some comments. If there's any questions you have or reach out to me, I hope this was informative and have a great day. Bye-bye.